In this episode of Travelogue, we explore the Hollandbeer grasslands with the Barho Mongols. We we'll witness the challenges facing their traditional way of life and discover old customs that are prevailing in their brave new world. Wow, I feel absolutely tiny standing here. So we left the city to explore the vast Wollongbo grasslands, which is actually the biggest grassland in China. And I'm here to meet the ethnic Mongols who, in many places, still follow the same traditions they've had for centuries and continue to live their lives on horseback. I'm Taran, welcome to this episode of Travelogue. of China is covered in grasslands. They provide the livelihoods of 800 million people. On the steppes of Hollandbeer live a dozen ethnic minorities whose histories, traditions and lives are deeply entwined with the land. In Mongolia, grass is life. So, of all the many different Mongolian tribes out there, the Barho are definitely the oldest. So, you definitely should come here to get a feeling for Mongolian customs and traditions. Also known as the Baga, during the Mongol Empire, this distinguished clan served the Great Khan's armies. They were originally from the eastern region of Lake Baikal. For over 300 years, the Barga Mongols have lived on Bulambeyo's grasslands. These days, this area is a popular tourist attraction. So this is called an alba, which is uh, basically a sacred pile of rocks, but originally it served a more practical purpose. Um, out on the endless grasslands, it's very easy to get lost, and every time you found one of these, you'd know that it always points south, but later on it gained more spiritual importance. People would bury relics under them, and any time horsemen rode by, they'd get off their horses and circumambulate it three times chuck a rock on there or uh, bring some sacrificial goods too. In addition to acting as restaurants and accommodation, there are a number of yurts dedicated to showcasing Mongolian culture. From paintings of Genghis Khan's life to contortionists and shamanic dance rituals, you'll get a pretty comprehensive view on what it means to be a Mongol. Ah. So in here you have pretty much everything you'll need in day-to-day -day life as a Mongolian. These are, um, these are, I think these are horse bits and these are reins and they'd be made out of uh, cowhide so they're really nice and strong. Got a bit of fur here. Obviously you've got your saddle, that's probably one of the most important things you need on the grasslands. You've got your bronze cooking pots for making milk tea. Um, You've got your winter stuff here, so you've got your winter gloves lined with sheep's wool. Um, but the thing is, these gloves aren't very good for holding the reins of your horse. They'll slip through, so what they'll do instead is put on these babies. They look a bit like bell bottoms, but um, you hold the reins in here, and then you put your hands together, and voila! Your fingers don't freeze off while you're riding the horse. It's all very ingenious but you can't live without even a single one of these items. There's even a Mongolian language class. Mongol. I kind of forgot that one. My mum would not be happy. Um, but you know what, I noticed these things earlier and uh, if you switch this on... See, I knew how to say mother all along. 
So these are great. I mean, it teaches you Mongolian from a young age. And I love this one because it's so specific to the culture. I mean, like this one. Hacha is, is, a, is a horse bit. And then this is bow and arrow. Lomsom. And then this one, I think it's a horse head fiddle. The Morunkur is one of the most important musical instruments in Mongolian culture. Its strings are made of horse hair, while its neck is carved in the shape of a horse head. A common saying goes that a Mongol without a horse is like a bird without wings. Unlike in the West, here horses aren't pets. They're used for transportation, sport, and as sources of food. Foals grow up playing with toddlers, so they're essentially broken in, while adult horses freely roam grasslands. There is a strong relationship of trust. You know, like, yeah, you can see uh, a lot of videos of horses running around. It always seems kind of surreal, but when you see it in person, it's really powerful. Many of these techniques are battle tested, allowing the rider to shield themselves from arrows while returning fire at full gallop. As Genghis Khan once said, it is easy to conquer the world from the back of a horse. So if you're going to come enjoy some time on the grasslands, you've got to stay in one of these Mongolian yurts, but truth be told, I've stayed in yurts before, and um, sometimes they can be a little bit inconvenient, Ooh, which is why this place is, uh, I, I think, definitely a step up. Let's check out the bedroom. Wow, oh, this is nice. Look at that. So it's still traditional style, but you know, whereas a, a normal Mongolian yurt would just be big and round, and there'll just be um, not even one bed. Everyone will just kind of be sleeping together. Here, you've actually got separate beds, and I think on a day as hot as this, yep, <laughs> they've got a shower. So <laughs> you've got all the mod cons here, Wi-Fi too. And I think most importantly, oh, when you're just relaxing, you've got a great view of the grasslands and uh, you can watch some people ride horses too. Coming up next, I join a family of modern day herdsmen and discover how the grasslands are changing before soaring over the majestic Argon wetlands. Forty kilometers from Hailar district is the home of Simu Jide and Siren Dasi. Oh, this is nice. So I'm uh, here to meet a family of herdsmen who will hopefully take us out uh, to the grasslands with them today. Hey, Neha. Sevenu, Neha, Neha. Hey, Neha, Neha. Neha, Neha. <笑>很漂亮咱们这个环境我看这个蒙古包还有现在的建筑哈对那蒙古包是我们现在是直接在右侧的哦咱是准备要出去了吗今天想去一下羊改那个那个什么草场<笑><笑> 
怎么样？行，那我大头我看看吧。那我跟您一块去。去，好，看吧。这个这位小哥，三百诺，刚刚加的。啊，你好。That's like the early two phrases on Mongolian, I know. 哎，你叫什么名字？哦。塞班努，各位好欢，塞班努，跟我打过去，跟我打过去不？哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈
And though it's mostly known for its grasslands, this region is also rich in wetlands and virgin forests. Okay, here we are. So uh, you have to, it, it takes a while to find them because you have to be quite up close, but in the forest there's loads of these little uh, good luck charms. And uh, most of them are for love, but this one's like, um, I wish my dad, mum, granddad, and grandma good health. But apparently this stems from a tradition whereby um, Russian ladies would meet Chinese men here in the forest and kind of go on dates. But I guess uh, it's evolved to become more of a, you know, all-encompassing thing. <laughs> Not far from the birch forest is the Heishantol Wetland Scenic Area. It's set inside a beautiful part of the Argon Wetlands, which is home to a huge number of marshes, swamps and bogs. If you spent most of your life in crowded, polluted cities, your lungs will thank you for coming here. Ah, oh, the air here is so fresh. It kind of reminds me a little bit of my home in the UK because I grew up near the forest, but I mean, this is the Oregon wetlands. It's, it's the biggest in Asia, so there isn't really any comparison. But I mean, even though it's not as awe-inspiring as endless grasslands, the wetlands are incredibly important. They're basically the lungs of the planet. So it's an incredibly diverse and fragile ecosystem that we need to protect. <laughs> During dry season, these wetlands provide shelter for millions of birds migrating from East Asia to Australia. You won't find any red-crowned cranes or wild geese during summer, but that doesn't mean you can't stay in these nifty log cabins and observe the wetlands' many other species of wildlife. If you're brave, you can even get a bird's eye view of the Argon wetlands. So I uh, got my GoPro at the ready. Um, you know, one of the best ways to see the grasslands is from the sky. Although, you know, I'm afraid of heights. It's something I have to do because apparently it's, uh, it's going to be really pretty. I'm going to do a bit of paragliding. I just hope it's safe. They're like laying out this parachute and the parachute looks really small. I mean, there's going to be the two of us. So I won't be by myself screaming in the air, but... Um, <laughs> Still a little bit nervous. You're facing the ocean, Mom. Oh, you're facing the ocean. Hey, hello, hello. Now, for a while, for a while, be safe, be safe, be safe, be safe, be safe. slowly drifts away, the majesty of nature's design is revealed. Up here, everything man-made seems insignificant. The grasslands really do stretch as far as the eye can see. And the Argon wetlands form a vast organic labyrinth that sprawls across the land. This really is the best way to see Hulunbeer. Coming up next, we'll find out just why Mongols are said to be born in the saddle and get front row seats for the curiously named Three Games of Men.
Oh, it's pretty impressive. So this is the Gandro Temple, which is the largest Tibetan temple here in Hulambuya. And tomorrow they're going to be consecrating one of their new halls, which is why you've got this chalk drawing here, lots of preparations, but you um, should go in and have a look first. Oh, it's an interesting mix of styles here. So this um, temple has a, a mixture of Han Chinese, uh, Tibetan and Mongolian styles. You can kind of see the Han Chinese everywhere, but if you look at this, straight away you know this is from Tibetan Buddhism. You've got these prayer flags with um, protective animals on uh, you know, the, the four cardinal points, north, east, south, west. And then um, if you're a, a pilgrim or a, you know, if you come to visit the temple, uh, you'd see these prayer wheels and uh, you'd know that while you're walking clockwise around the temple that you should come here and spin these prayer wheels because they have mantras inside these scriptures and when you turn them it's equivalent to reciting the mantras yourself so it helps you accumulate good karma um, but this place was originally built in the Qing dynasty and it looks very new because it's been renovated many, many times. Originally, actually, there were lots of Mongolian yurts situated uh, on the outskirts of the temple, which um, housed monks, but uh, you won't really see that many Mongolian influences these days. But they're still trying to get back um, the glory and the, uh, the grandeur of the temple uh, when it was originally founded. Right now, it's only about two-thirds of the original size, which is really pretty big, in my opinion. The temple's name plaque was personally inscribed by Emperor Qianlong, the longest reigning ruler in Chinese history. At its height, Ganzhou Temple housed four and a half thousand lamas, and even today remains very influential. So it looks like uh, people are still making preparation for tomorrow's consecration. To celebrate the consecration, there will be a whole day of festivities tomorrow. So uh, it's a big day of the ceremony. See for yourself, it's three in the morning. I mean, this is when I usually get back home after a heavy night of drinking. But um, the horse race is going to be held in half an hour because apparently this is when horses are at their best. I just hope the riders are going to be awake. To be honest, we had it easy. A lot of people travelled for days to get here, and many camped out on the grasslands. Okay, so uh, this is really surprising for me. Uh, on the way here, I was talking to our driver and I was like, why do they have to get up so early for this? And he said, it's because uh, if we start racing at this time, it's nice and cool, so the horses don't sweat as much. And all of the riders, all of the jockeys are children, because obviously they're, they're lighter. You're 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 how old are you? Three years. Sanya, 我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯了。我习惯
These kids make riding look so easy, as if horse and jockey were one. Many of them will compete again immediately after this race, but this time on different mounts. After a while, there is a clear winner. Just eight years old. <laughs> so it looks like uh, everything has begun. This is an Abba ceremony, and uh, they're quite common in Mongolian culture, but they're also very, very important. And each place has its own set of rules and rites. Here the lamas are reciting their mantras and then once they're done they're going to circumambulate the Abba three times and then head up. But it's not just the lamas, the laymen are coming here as well in a bit and uh, they're also going to be celebrating the Abba. This Abba ceremony takes place just once a year and many pilgrims have travelled from afar to take part in it. They're here to pray for good health and fortune. After an Alba ceremony, there's usually a mini Nadan festival. The Mongols fondly refer to it as the three games of men, namely horse racing, archery and wrestling. Originally sporting competitions, Nadams later served as a way to train soldiers. Genghis Khan believed that wrestling was a great way of keeping his army combat ready. With no weight, age or time limits, Mongolian wrestling is the ultimate test of strength and endurance. So uh, it's been a pretty exciting day today and I'm kind of surprised actually because after the very you know, serious religious occasion of the Abba ceremony to uh, see all of these festivities, um, in Mongolian there's something called a Nadam festival which is basically um, means to play and it's one of the most important events during the Mongolian calendar and you can kind of tell the spirit of the Mongolian people already, they're bold, they're forthright, they're brave. I mean, from wrestling and riding bareback this morning, and even though some people have upgraded to cars and motorbikes, the spirit of the grassland still remains.